So uh, here is the problem. We need to determine the order of a reaction and from experimental data, these are experiments one, two, and three. And these are the concentration of each reactants and the relative rates. This is the main reaction. All right. Now when you look at the data, all right, when you look at this data, let's look at for this reactor. All right. When you compare, when you compare for experimental data set one and two, the other reactant concentration, they are constant, but it's from 0.1 to 0.2 concentration increase. For C2H5N, that's where the rate is doubling, right? So from that, we can say that it's in first order. So we can say C2H5N is first order, okay? Now let's look at the other reactor. Now when you look at the other reactant, experiment one and two, concentration of other reactant is constant, but when you look at it, 0.1 to 0.3, if concentration of this reactant is three times, then the relative rate is also what? Three times, right? So that's where we can, so it's also in a first order. All right, so when you write reaction rate law, then we can write, I'm going to go to next page. We can write rate equals K C2H5N concentration, and this is the first order, and then C2H5BR and it's a first order. Now what's the overall order? Overall order of this reaction is one plus one, which is going to be two. Now when we find the K value, now we need to find this K. So when we rearrange this equation, we get K equals the rate divided by concentration of C2H5N is to 1 and C2H5BR and 1. Now we can take any experimental value. So when we take any experimental value, let's say we are going to take experiment 3 value where rate is 9.0 molar per minute divide by 0.1 molar concentration and 0 0.30 molar concentration. When you calculate K value, you get about 3.0 times 10 raised to 2, 1 over molarity minute. And that's how you can calculate K value. So when you compare those experimental values and from that you can determine its order of uh, each reactants. So it's not per second.